Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I thought today would be a good time to provide an update on my Precision Matthews PM728VT CNC conversion project. I've been working through the spindle control portion of this and have a few new pieces of information, but before I get into that, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, many of you are clicking on the links that are in the description of this video, and uh, thank you for doing that because that helps support my YouTube channel. So hopefully you'll find that uh, information useful and helpful. And if you happen to decide to make a purchase, that's awesome. And I appreciate the support that that lends. So back on to the uh, topic here of the day. So if you watched my last videos, you know that I uh, smoked the motor control board in the PM728VT. You can see what I did. It was it was spectacular. I pulled like a major boneheaded move. I had some alligator clips on the potentiometer and I dropped them. They shorted out on the table of the machine and blew up this motor control board. So this poor, innocent, helpless motor control board has been <laughs> taken out of service. So the folks at Precision Matthews, of course, are very helpful. They keep spare parts for all these things in inventory, and they are uh, sending me some new parts. So I hope to have that here soon so I can try it. But interestingly, so this is great. This is one of the nice things about YouTube. The gentleman who, remember, uh, I showed you a wiring diagram a while back. Matter of fact, I might have it laying here somewhere. I can't remember. Here it is. This wiring diagram right here that uh, I've posted this and this has shown up on a few other uh, forums and different postings. I did not create this. Uh, a gentleman created it and well, a long time ago he sent me a link and uh, very nice of him to do that because I think he's helped me and many, many, many other people out there uh, wire up their Precision Matthews machines to get spindle control. And uh, his, if, you, if you're looking for him, you can jump on the Centroid Acorn forum, which I'll try to throw a link in the description of this video that'll take you there. Uh, he goes by Swissy on the Centroid Acorn forum. So, and maybe he'll comment on this video. I hope he does, but really nice fellow. He's helped a lot of people out, and he's, he's provided this wiring diagram. And uh, he reached out to me. And when he saw my last video, and being the gentleman that he was, he was like, hey, you know, see what you're doing there. Um, just want to offer you some advice. Might, might be kind of dangerous uh, to be clipping alligator clips on the terminals of your potentiometer. Uh, he suggested that maybe you connect, you know, maybe snip the wires and use, you know, some proper wiring techniques so you can, you know, <laughs> instead of grabbing a hold of things with alligator clips basically he he was very politely suggesting that I do this the right way and he's 100% correct obviously you can see what happened here my alligator clips shorted out and I blew up a board and that's a very expensive mistake so nobody likes that so yes you can uh, just snip the wires and uh, make your connections but as I was looking at this connector, this, this right here is the connector where the potentiometer and the forward and reverse uh, connections go. And actually, you can sort of read that. You can see that that tapping, that doesn't do anything. Common, reverse, forward, uh, th these are all the uh, connections that you use to control the spindle. So I've been looking at that connector, and I've, I've, just, I've been walking around thinking to myself, man, I've seen that before. What is that thing? Uh, and I happened to walk over here, so I I like to uh, race RC cars, a scale buggies and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. And I just as I'm as I'm walking around my garage, thinking, where have I seen that connector before? I came over here and I realized that I've seen it right here. These are uh, for these um, 6S balance balancing connectors. This is the same connector that uh, is used. For the extension leads so i thought hmm that's pretty cool so i went and uh found an extra one laying around and this that's what this is this is a a balance board extension cord 
for charging LiPo batteries. If you're into racing RC cars, these are relatively cheap. I will, I will try to put a link to uh, maybe an Amazon site or something like that where you can buy these. But, but what you can do is uh, you can plug this right into the board, right? So let's just do that. Boom. Look at that. So now you can, uh, you know, for relatively cheap, you can, you can buy a couple of these, um, you know, snip off the other end that you don't need, and uh, properly and safely wire up your connections to the uh, motor control board in your PM728VT. So hopefully that little bit of advice will um, prevent uh, some people from doing what I did and ruining their board and uh, taking their machine out of service. So there's the first thing that I thought was useful. So thank you, Swissy, for reaching out to me and uh, kind of encouraging me to, you know, up my game here a little bit. And uh, thank you, um, World of RC Racing, for having these nice uh, balance board extension leads that you can purchase. So there's the first thing. Second thing is uh, hooked up an encoder. So this is the... They're, these things are all over eBay. They're marked as an Omron product, but I, I have a real difficult time believing that they are not anything more than a knockoff. I gotta think they're like a knockoff. I don't know. Uh, you can buy these for around thirty dollars, and um, I've I've purchased several of them. I've had uh, one show up that was DOA. It was no good, but everyone else that I've purchased has has done fine. So what this is, you can see the part number. This is a 2,000 pulse per rev um, quadrature encoder. So what that really means, it, it's a 2,000 line encoder, but what happens is it produces 8,000 pulses per revolution. That's how quadrature, quadrature, quadrature encoders. Boy, that's uh, hard for me to say today. That's how these types of encoders work. So 2,000 lines gives you 4,000 pulses per revolution. And uh, these are nice. Uh, they actually have the wires labeled right on the side of the housing here, and I can't quite get my phone to focus. There we go. So that, that's kind of cool. The labeling there makes it easy to uh, hook them up. I also have a little uh, set of instructions that I made, and I'll, I'll try to throw a link here in the description to this as well. This is a document I made for Oh, something that I used to sell. Um, I probably won't sell too many of these anymore, but the directions are good. And there's a chart in here that tells you how to hook these things up to the Centroid Acorn board. And uh, I guess you could pause the video and, and look at this as well, but that's the information. Now, I will say the, uh, the, they, re, they used the co color code orange, right? So if you see there, there's orange, red, orange, when you look at the wires, uh, I don't know, they don't look orange to me. Sometimes they look yellow, sometimes they look pink, I don't know. But you'll be able to figure it out. Um, so just keep that in mind. It may not be, the colors may not be a nice brilliant orange. It may look like some other shade of uh, orange or pink or something. But what you do is something just like this. You can see how I you just get one of these uh, DB9, I believe it's a male connector, and uh, you just wire it up, and you, you plug it right in to your uh, Centroid Acorn board. It, it's super easy to do. So, you know, having quadrature spindle feedback is pretty pretty nice feature, and uh, you can get there relatively cheaply and easily with the Centroid Acorn. So I have this hooked up, and I'm just going to spin it with my hand. But you can see, right, works. Um, and that's it. I mean, it's really easy. You, in, in the Centroid software, you have to go into the wizard and just tell it that you have a spindle encoder. Uh, tell it that it's an 8,000 pulse per rev setup. And um, if you look at it and you're... Your, you know, 
the number is reversed, right? So if, you, if you're going clockwise and it's telling you that you're going like negative 4,000 RPM, all you have to do is go into this, the wizard and instead of telling it it's 8,000 pulses per rev, you just tell it it's negative 8,000 pulses per rev. That switches the sign of the feedback and that's how you can get your, your RPM to match up with the direction of your spindle. Very simple. Works great. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So there's the update for today. So if you're looking for uh, to get a, your uh, your machine under your spindle under CNC control, you know you're going to have to do the encoder thing eventually. I've done it on other machines. So this is the uh, encoder setup on this little teeny tiny little Sureline CNC lathe that I mess around with. You can sort of see what's going on here. These guys just have a uh, they have a timing belt. It's a 130XL. And I, I may actually use the same type of belt on the, the Precision Matthews milling machine, but, but I've used this setup on this little Shareline lathe uh, for a while now, and it has worked great. I haven't had a, uh, you know, a single issue with this encoder uh, running it off that lathe. I mean, yeah, they're super cheap. Um, like I said, they're around 30 bucks, but they work, they work fine at least for the things I do with them. All right, well, that's all I have today. So thank you for watching, and once again, thanks for clicking those links in the description of my videos. And I uh, hope you enjoy working on your CNC control projects. So be safe and have a great day.